So what's going on everybody? This is part two of the video I'm making for a cam housing seal replacement. And right now I'm working on an in-frame. So I'm actually gonna be finishing up the in-frame as far as mounting up the cylinder head, torquing up the head bolts. Once I get ready to install the cam housing along with the seal, that's where I'm gonna show you part two of the video. I just kinda of wanna show you what I'm doing. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not gonna do a video on the cylinder head installation yet just because I'm behind schedule and there's actually a lot of shit to do. Um, so I'm not quite set up for that yet. So anyway, just showing you guys some progress on what I'm doing. Again, in frame, I've got all, all new liners in, got all the pistons in, everything's torqued down. So again, we're gonna get the cylinder head installed and then I'm gonna continue the video on the cam seal housing uh, replacement, the gasket replacement or the seal replacement. So anyway, I'll keep you guys posted. Okay guys, and there is our cylinder head that's about to go into our in-frame, our rebuild. Now, completely rebuilt cylinder head. Okay, I did put new, well, I did not, but I had our, our cylinder head guy, the uh, machine shop, he actually went through and put all new valve stem seals, guides, all that good stuff. Um, I'm not using any of the old stuff, obviously. It's just I'm not gonna trust it when it comes to doing an in-frame. So everything is pretty much set up, getting ready to get hoisted and installed into the truck. So I wanted to show you that again, that's the cylinder head. It's pretty much ready to go. And I, I try to assemble it out here because it makes it a lot easier. Sometimes there isn't enough room when it's on the truck, okay? Here is the old cylinder head. Old cylinder head is junk, okay? Underneath, so let me see if I can flip it over, but underneath um, it's cracked, so there's no way to repair it. There probably is a way to repair it, but I'm not gonna take a chance on it again. When you're doing an in-frame, um, it's a lot of money and a lot of time that goes into it, and especially if this thing breaks down on the road, you wanna actually you know, just do everything right so you don't have any issues or any complications. Again, old cylinder head, new cylinder head, or rebuilt cylinder head. Um, price difference, that all depends. I mean, if you go directly through Freightliner, you're still looking at, you know, almost $4,000 for a rebuild. For a brand new one, obviously the price is gonna be higher. So this is the route we, we took. I've had pretty good luck with it. In the description, I'm gonna put the name of the machine shop that I use if you guys wanna hit them up. They're really good. They're out here in Southern California, okay? Riverside, um, Riverside Diesel. But anyway, you can hit them up. I'll put the description. I'll put all that information on there if you guys wanna check right, in. Guys, so I wanted to flip over the cylinder head so you can take a look underneath and see exactly the damage that I was talking about, okay? Now, as you can see here on the number one, there isn't any issue there. On the number two, three, four, pretty much everything within the center, you're gonna see those hairline cracks, okay? I don't know if you can see that there. I'm trying not to get too much of a glare for you guys, but um, there we go. So I'm gonna kind of show you those cracks. So the cylinder head, in my opinion, it's no good. And obviously machine shop, uh, that's what he recommended is, you know what, hey, just get this replaced. But I wanna show you that so you guys know exactly what you're dealing with on your cylinder. Okay head. guys, so working on part two of our video for the cam housing seal. What I wanted to show you is the cam housing. This is the underneath part or the undercarriage that meets with the cylinder head. Now you are gonna to need to clean it up. What I usually do is just get some brake cleaner and clean up in this channel. Make sure you take everything out. Sometimes you might have some debris. Sometimes you might have a little bit of the old gasket. Anyway, clean that up as best you can. Again, I just use a rag and um, some brake cleaner. So I get all that done. And what you're going to need to do is also remove those seals, okay? Those are all going to come uh, new as far as in the in frame that I'm doing. Um, at this point, you're better off just replacing all of them. And again, there's six seals because you have six injectors, okay? You don't really need to remove the cam position sensor. I leave that in place, I don't worry about that. So again, clean it up as best possible. We're gonna put the new seal on. I'm gonna show you the way I do it. Um, I'm gonna use a little bit of uh, the Detroit gasket maker. I like that stuff a lot and it's just something we're gonna apply. Once the seal's in, we're gonna apply a little bit around just to create a nicer seal. So we're gonna get that installed I'm gonna try and show you as best I can step by step. And okay, we'll guys, so we have it all cleaned up. Well, not actually cleaned up. We have all the old seals removed. Again, a little bit of brake cleaner or whatever you would like to use. Clean rag, clean all that up. And then that way, when you're ready to install your new seals, you hopefully don't have any debris or oil or anything blocking you. These are our cams. So the cams are ready to be installed. I gotta clean them up a little bit better. But what I like to do is automatically mark the timing on them. Okay, once I do that, then it's a lot easier when I install everything. See, there's your intake, and there's your exhaust. So they're ready to be installed. 
again, once I clean it up a little bit better, um, I'm gonna show you the process as we go. But again, I wanted to show you just what I do to kind of get everything prepped and ready. Uh, let's get the seal on there. Let's put some of the adhesive that I was talking about. Again, it's just uh, the gasket eliminate from Detroit. And uh, let's get started. Okay guys, so we have our seal installed. Very easy to do, as you can see. It literally goes right in there. There's nothing special to it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a little bit of this. Okay, the gasket maker from Detroit. Again, you're not gonna need a lot, just a little bead that's gonna go all the way around. I like to do that just in case there's a little spot somewhere that doesn't seat properly. It will help it seal, okay? There we go. Just make sure, again, push it into place. It's not gonna fall out. It actually sits in nicely. And again, you're gonna go ahead and just put a little small bead of some of this stuff. And again, that's what I do. You don't have to do it, but you're gonna do a small bead all the way around. And then once you do that, of course, make sure your timing is set. That way, when you install your cams, your intake and your exhaust, you don't have to worry about, you know, where are you being, you know, your timing being off or anything like that. So again, mark, mark the teeth on the cams, put the seal on if you want. This is optional. Again, this is what I use. You don't have to do it, but I use a little bit of this, a small bead all the way around. Again, it's only going to be around on the seal. Okay, there's nowhere else. You don't need to add it here. You don't need to add it here. Again, just wherever the rubber seal is, that's where you can add, if you want, the little uh, bead, the sealant. All right, so let's get that going. I'm gonna install it, and I'm gonna hopefully try and show you as much as I can, as clear as I can. As, as you can see, our cam housing is now installed, not completely done. You're gonna notice that it's still up in the air. That means one of these guides, okay, right in there. It's gonna have one on this corner, and it's gonna have one on the passenger side rear corner, okay? What you're gonna wanna do is get a rubber mallet, something like that, and that's it, in it goes. You're gonna do the same thing for the rears, just make sure it's all seated. Okay, now at this point, you're gonna set your timing, okay, on your cam housing, okay? The timing's done down at the bottom, but now you're gonna to have to do it up here, okay? So this is where that little device that I showed you guys in my other video, that's where it comes in handy. So set that up first. We're gonna go ahead and get ready to install our cams, our exhaust and our intake. Okay guys, one thing I want to share with you guys, okay, on your cam housing, you're gonna have your cam caps. Obviously you're gonna have the front one, and then you're gonna have one, two, three, four, five, and then the last one, okay, which is gonna be your towards the rear, towards the back. Right now the cams are not installed, so back here, okay, some of them have them, some of them do not. The newer models, so 2011, 12 on up, they started to have them. Some of them don't on the rare exception, but they have these little bolts that are that are there. Okay, so make sure you can install them first. Okay, and then just run them down a little bit. I'll show you what the torque specs are in a second. Because once you have your cams installed, you won't be able to see them very well. So you're kind of being blinded or you're a little blind when you're getting in there. But again, one right back there and one right there. Okay, the rest I'm gonna show you right now in a sec. Okay guys, so at this point we're ready to get everything installed. Our cams, our exhaust cam and our intake cam. What I like to do is set that up first. So this way you know exactly where your timing marks are going to be on your cams. I also add a little bit of uh, assembly lube or lube, 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 lube on where the cam is actually going to go. And the reason why, again, it's pretty much dry. We've taken everything out. Uh, in this case, I'm doing, this is all part of an in-frame. So again, I wanna add as much lubrication and protection as possible. So I add a little bit there. Uh, again, it will get dissolved once the engine starts running. So again, just add a little bit on there. We're gonna get our cams right now. We're gonna install the exhaust cam first. And again, we're gonna to try to line up that tooth with that hash mark. And then we're gonna do the same with the intake side. Okay, so once we do that, then I'll put the bridges. I'll show you how to do that. I'll show you what the torque specs are and the sequence. And that's pretty much it. That's what this video is gonna be about again. The seal, the cam housing seal. This is part two. Let's finish this so As up. you can see, we have our exhaust cam. That's been installed. And if you look at the timing mark, we're gonna be pretty much right on the money. See, you can actually move it just a little bit depending on what you need, but that's pretty straight. Now we're gonna do the same thing for the intake side. Now the intake side, intake side gets a little funny, a little tricky, and I'll show you okay, why. So now we have the intake exhaust, I'm sorry, the intake cam installed. 
and you're gonna notice that it does not line up. See, it's about a tooth off. So what you're gonna do at this point is you're gonna lift it back up and you're gonna rotate it one tooth in, put it back down, and then you're gonna see exactly where you are at that point. See, it's about a tooth, yeah, one tooth off. So let's get it in its correct place. Now and we go have picked there. it up and moved it one tooth over. And as you can see, it's gonna be just a hair, almost right on the money actually. I was gonna say just a hair off, but see if you look at there, it's gonna be off. So make sure you're on the money as much as possible. And then that's when this other piece of your timing tool comes in handy, okay? Let me see if I can get it. And again, this is where your other piece or your other timing tool is gonna to come in handy. So when this gets installed, again, nice and easy, you're gonna have some resistance in there. Now it's in its place. You're gonna go back here, you're gonna go ahead and verify your timing is correct. And look at that, it's pretty spot on. So we're gonna leave it as close to center as possible. Again, it may be just a little hair off. We're gonna leave it as close to it as possible. The other one did not move at all. So now we're gonna put our cam caps on there. I'm gonna show you how to do that. I'm gonna show you the book on how to torque it. And that will pretty much be it for this video. Okay guys, so we're gonna start installing our cam caps. And again, what I did to the bottom, we are going to do to the top, which put a little bit of assembly lube. Okay, and again, that's because these cams will spin. Obviously they're gear driven. So to prevent anything dry or any damage, we're gonna install our caps. As you can tell, it's pretty simple. The smaller one goes for your intake. The larger is for your exhaust. So you're gonna do that again. You're gonna do that all the way. This is the front one. You really can't mess that one up because that's where your Jake brake uh, solenoids are all going. put in. They are not torqued down yet. I just wanted to show you guys again the order that they go in. Number one, again, can't really mix that one up. Number two, I was telling you they started to actually mark or put the numbers on here. There's number two, three, four, five, six, and then the last one, of course, is seven. So we're gonna go ahead and get the bolts install installed. We're gonna go ahead and start uh, tightening, tightening this thing down. We're gonna to torque it down, but I wanna show you guys what the book says and how to do it. And that's pretty much it that will conclude this video. So let's go ahead and show you what the specs are, how to do it. We're gonna get this all done. And that's pretty much it for this video, again, for the cam housing seal replacement. Okay guys, so really quick, I wanna show you what the book is telling you to do when it comes to your cam caps the way they're torqued and how they're torqued and the torque specs and all the good stuff. So if you're looking at it from the driver's side, this is more or less what you're looking at. Now you're thinking, what the hell? I see a bunch of uh, squares, triangles, circles. It doesn't make any sense. But anyway, what you're gonna wanna do is always start in the center, which is gonna be, again, consider that to be your number one. And you're gonna work for number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then you work your way out to the outside. One, two, you're gonna cross and you're gonna complete that pattern all the way around. I'm gonna show you that right now in a second. Okay, and there you go. So again, as you can tell, start in the center. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. When you're done, return back to the center. Start at the number eight, nine, 10, 11, cross over to 12, 13, and so on, and follow the pattern that's there. These are the torque specs, okay? Very important. So the initial part is 15 foot pounds or 15 pounds foot torque. Once you do that, that's just to seat everything, then you're gonna go ahead and proceed to there, between 37 and 40 pounds foot torque, okay? Once you've done that, again, remember those two bolts that I showed you that were kind of hidden? Okay, those are going to be right here, number nine and number eight, or number eight and nine, okay? And again, those are behind the gear. So that's kind of why I wanted to show you that first. And then the last bolts that you're gonna have, the very small ones are gonna be the same thing. One, two, three, four, five, six then all the way down to there, okay? And again, those are going to be 22 foot pounds. So pretty much the larger bolts right there, 15, start it off, and then you go from 37 or you can go up to 40 pounds foot torque. And then the little bolts that you have there, again, I'll show you that right now when we go back downstairs and show you which, those, which bolts those are. And then that's the sequence. Again, always start in the center, work your way left, right, left, right, left, right and then finish it off with number seven, I'm sorry, with number eight and number nine. And that's it, that's exactly how it is. It's very simple how to do your cam replacement. Uh, I think I'll probably do another video when it comes to your rocker installation, how to do that, how to torque that, uh, and then obviously to do a valve adjustment and then we'll go from there. But anyway, that's, that's it up here, how it goes torqued. I'm gonna go back downstairs and we're gonna get that.
there you have it, the cam seal replacement on a DD-15. It's actually the same process on a DD-13. There might be some different uh, steps depending on the newer model you may have, but for the most part, they're very identical. Again, work your way from the center. So starting, let's see, let's give you a little view from the side. So starting with this bolt and work your way down the aisle. Again, left, right, left, right. 15 foot pounds and then you're going to proceed to your 40 foot pounds okay and then after that you're going to proceed on the outside and this will be your last step these little bolts that you have there okay they go all the way across and those are only 22 foot pounds so again i hope the video is pretty clear as always you guys can always hit me up i try to get back to you guys as fast as possible uh don't forget some of the dd15s the earlier models the bolts that were hidden right back there okay sometimes they don't have it okay so just keep a keep an eye out for that but anyway i hope this video guys i hope this video helps you guys out if you have any questions as always hit me up hit the like subscribe uh thanks thanks again for watching man